plus tangent squared x. Okay. Now notice it's kind of the same situation we had on the last example. So we're just going to distribute the, just the tangent inside the, the portions. Let's press this off. So on the outside I'll have secant squared x. And on the inside I'll have tan to the fourth plus tan to the sixth. So now, you guys kind of tell what's going to happen, right? It makes it much easier to look at there. So we're going to let u now equal tangent. And now this works out. Because that secant squared now ends up getting engulfed in our u substitution. So this ends up being the integral of u to the fourth plus u to the sixth. Which again, much easier to deal with. So, finishing this off, this is going to be u to the 5th and u to the 7th. And then just plugging in what u was to begin with. So, this is going to be tan to the 6th, or sorry, tan to the 5th. Tan to the 5th over 5 plus tan to the 7th over 7 plus c. And there we go. So like I said, right, sometimes your first approach will not work. You just got to go back and figure out another approach, right? You just got to be patient, right, when it comes to it. Okay, let's try the next one. So the next one is find integral of secant squared x. So notice there's no more cosine, right? It's just another higher power of sine, which is still doable, uh, believe it or not. So we're just going to follow the same rules applied we had earlier. So the power of sine is even. So that means we're going to be using both power of sine and cosine even. Well, you don't have cosine, but that's the only case where sine is even. We're going to be using one of these three properties to help ourselves out. Okay. And again, it's just, you know, sometimes this will work, sometimes that works. It just depends on what's given to us itself. Okay. Now notice. We're definitely not going to be using cosine squared because we don't have cosine squared. We have sine squared. And we're definitely not going to be using sine cosine because, again, we don't have cosine. So sometimes it's not just like, you know, a guessing game. Sometimes it's actually you, know, you have no choice but to use one of these three. And notice this is the way to go because that's the only choice we can actually do. Okay? So therefore, we're going to convert this into this form itself and then integrate that. Because, again, that would be much easier to deal with. Okay? So this will end up being the integral of 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2x. Which again is actually much easier to deal with because we've actually seen this before as well. So I just simplified a little bit. I'll just take out the 1 half to make it look like this. So the first part's easy, right? Integral of 1 is just going to be x. But this is, again, what we got to deal with. <coughs> so we let u equal 2x. du is 2. So it's going to be divided by 2. So this is going to be the integral of cosine u. Integral of cosine is going to be um, sine. So this is going to be sine of u. So if we go back over here, so it's going to be 1 half times integral of 1 is just x. Integral of negative, we just have to be negative. So negative sine of 2x. Oh, and I almost forgot that about 1 half as well. Put this over 2. I'm forgetting about that half. Because that half also has to be right here. And then finally, just distributing that one half gives us our final answer. And there we go. Okay. Right, and the last part is, well, what if everything fails? Or what if we have an alternative to this? So kind of like we have here. 
is what if we have numbers inside the sine or cosine, it, respectively? Okay. So this is the last scenario in this portion is what if we have you know integral uh, where m and w are you know real numbers like five and seven or two and five or negative five and three right and things like that. So we have three different scenarios. We have sine and cosine, sine sine, or cosine cosine. So any of these three properties, we're going to be using the, in, the reflectors of each one. So when given these ones, we're going to follow, do the following identities to help ourselves out. So we have sine of a times sine of cosine. That's essentially equal to sine of the difference plus sine of the, you know, the addition. And if we have both of them being uh, sines, so in other words, we have this scenario happening. Um, we're going to do convert it to cosine and fourths. And then we have cosines, cosines. <clears throat> so that gives you know, just major properties when it comes to it. And they're pretty straightforward, like you notice, there you have numbers in front, so you know automatically you're going to be using these identities instead of the previous ones itself. Okay. So let's try this one out so you can see how this will work out. So we want to take the integral of sine of 6x, cosine of 15x. Okay. So in our scenario here, this is going to be a, and this is going to be b, right? The whole 6x, not just the value of 6. Okay. So we have sine cosine, so we're actually in this scenario. So we're going to be using the first property here, sine cosine. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this to be integral of one half times sine of a minus b, so six six x minus fifteen x. Okay. Plus sine a plus b, so six x plus. 15x. <clears throat> dx. Okay. And now we just simplify. So one half on the outside. So be sine of negative 9 plus sine of 21x. And now notice this is now individually the same situation we have here. So both of these now become a substitution method. And that's pretty much the whole gist of it. So we end up breaking it, we end up breaking the multiplication into actually additions where the integration is actually not that bad to begin with. Okay. So I'm just gonna so save some time. I'm just gonna do this both at the same time. So let, let u equal negative nine x, therefore du equals negative nine. So we divide by negative 9 du, and that's what we want here. And if you do the same thing here, I'll let w equal 21, so therefore dw is 21, and we just divide it over. And I do this in once because they're both signs, so once you do one, you essentially have the other one. And we know this ends up being, or both of them end up being the integral of sine du, which is just cosine, right? So this ends up being one half on the outside times negative one ninth of cosine of u, which is negative nine x. And on the other side, same process plus 121 cosine of 21 X and then finally distribute the one half to get our final answer so negative 1 over 18 cosine of negative 9 X minus or minus uh, should be plus oh no integral of sine is positive uh, negative cosine, so this is negative, this is negative, that's right. So this should be negative, yeah. 42 cosine of 21x, and then plus c. And there we go. 
So like I said, just take your time when it comes to these ones. You know, if you first don't succeed, don't worry. Just go back and just trickle from the drawing board and eventually you'll get it correct. So just patience is a virtue.